Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mervi, for this kind introduction. Good evening. Uh, how are you? And you're supposed to ask me back also. I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. My mouth is running a little bit dry. Um, how about you? Are, are you thirsty? No, yeah, exactly. You have a beer there, maybe a cider there, a soft drink or a glass of water. But one thing in common, that in about an hour, we will all feel an urge to go <laughs> and relieve those liquids into the toilet. But what is it that makes this urge? What is it that makes us feel it? Say hello to your kidney. <laughs> That's it, thank you. <laughs> one minute only. <laughs> All right, nine minutes to go. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, so, it's a, we all build of organs. We see with eyes, with hear, ear, hear with ears, uh, we breathe with lungs, and, and we feel, actually feeling is a controversial feeling. Um, we have a gut feeling, yeah, it says turn right or left, and um, we have these butterflies when we are all in love, and then, you know. Like, is it that we feel maybe with heart, or is it with the brain? Well, what I know for sure that we, what we need kidneys for, Kidneys keeps our body fluids in check. Now, how does it do it? It does it in three ways. At least three main ways I know. It first, it takes away the waste from your blood. It filters the blood, makes urine, and out of the body. Now, two, it balances the water and minerals in our blood. So, if there's too much, out. If there's too little, it absorbs back into the body. Now, and the third one is a sensing, which is a little bit less known, but kidney also is a sensing organ. Yes, one of those sensing organs again. What does it do? It senses that, for example, if you have too little of fluids in your body, like too little of water, it senses that it's too little of water, it absorbs back the water, but what it actually also does, it releases hormones to lift your blood pressure and circulate this blood pressure much more efficiently so that you have nutrients nicely to live and survive. Now, how does it do it? Well, we'll go a bit, little bit deeper in it. Kidneys are paired organs, so we have two of them. They are just right there behind our ribcage. And they have these filtering units I'm going to talk a lot about this filtering now. Th these filtering units are actually the tubules, a network of tubules inside the kidney, and there's plenty of them there. They're huge, if you know what I mean. So, human has roughly a million of these tiny, whiny networking tubules. Like, and um, if we tie them together, you know, like take the small tubules and tie them together and expand them, the distance will be 170 kilometers. That's about roughly the distance from Helsinki to Tampere. Now, keep calm, there's gonna be a little bit of math. We have seven to eight liters of blood in our body. How much of the blood do you think there would be filtered by the end of my talk in each of you? Oh, well, you could Google it up. One pint. It's a one liter in 10 minutes. You know, a bottle of milk or something like that. Actually, kidney filters our blood, cleans our blood 20 to 25 times a day. And that's a hard work for the kidney. And that's needed for keeping us alive. Unfortunately, about 10%, like one person in, in 10, sometimes in the future will develop some kidney disease which may lead uh, to failure of a kidney function. We cannot live without kidney. And it's a growing problem. So how do we fo solve this growing problem? Unfortunately, there isn't enough of suitable donor kidneys around there to replace the failure kidneys. What if we make an artificial kidney? What if we build a kidney? What do we need for that? We need an engineer. 
<laughs> right. But, you know, engineers such as me. Um, but how does engineers know how to build? Actually, we all were engineers. You just maybe can't remember. You know, when we were kids, if you give a toy for the kid, what does it do? It breaks it apart just in a minute. You all seen these Legos running around, the, right? And well, if you have kids, you would know. <laughs> but later on, the kids get the capacity to build. They understand the world through breaking those things into pieces, and they understand how they are built. Similarly, although not breaking so much apart, developmental biologists such as me are investigating, are looking, are observing how the organs are developing. This is an embryonic kidney, a video made by Niels Lindström, where it's showing how the embryonic kidney grows in re real time. There's a lot of cells, these pink, orange, or whatever, turning yellow cells. They are coming together. They're branching. They're forming the structures. They talk to each other. And there's plenty of things that there's going on. And we, observing that, learning how it's formed, by the way, at each end of that kidney, there will be this tubule forming, which was filtering the things. So it's fascinating for us to watch it, for one thing, and for the other, that we get enough of information uh, how does the kill is built and use that information to be our own. Now, by the way, we all at some point had six kidneys, and yet we are not an alien, right? I told you we have two kidneys. We had six at some point, each of us. So how does it, what's this all about? When we were all embryos, and yes, we all were embryos, we had six kidneys. We had three pairs of kidneys. And we need two pairs of kidneys, or two pairs of kidneys, or like two kidneys, one pair is functioning. And nature does not keep anything else that is not functioning. So while we were embryos, being nice monsters as we are, we kind of take the other two pairs away. Fun fact. What do I actually do? I build organoids. And what are organoids? Organoids are made of cells. They are three-dimensional um, structures that look like organs, but they're not just quite the same like they are. This is part of my research. And here you see these spheroids here, balls, whatever you call them. These, each of them, are organoids. And here you see what's inside of them. These are called stem cells. From them, we develop those tubules which I was talking about in the beginning of the talk. Now, I talked a lot about these tubules and filtering in tubules and things. Let's, let, help me out. Help me out to show you how the kidney works. I'd like you all to stand up a little bit. Stand up, stand up. Put your one hand in the air. Put your one hand in the air and say, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Excellent. You're fantastic kidneys. You do the job really great. So this one hand in the air, it's called primary cilia in the kidneys, and I'll show you where it is. So in, in this organ, that I'll be, this is a movie that I made to explain you how this organoid is or built. The blue cells around, they keep the things together. And now when we get rid of them, we see this green thing that is wrapping around the tubules. And we don't quite see it's a tubule, but we have to analyze it. So what we do, we see these red things, the cells, the balls that are sticking together to form probably tubule, but we're not quite yet sure if it is. Then we can dive inside and see where it is tubule. And that's where your hands are. That's where the party people, hey, ho. Oh. So that's the filtering part. And this is the organoid. So it has the structure, and it apparently has the function parts of it. But how does it actually compare to real kidneys? Now, allow me to make this really, really bad example of comparing it to Mona Lisa, right? We know the painting really well, and we know what it is, just like we know what kidney are. So what would be organoids like? They would be something like this. <laughs> so they, you apparently see that they are not quite the same, the painting, right? But you recognize it. It serves the actual visual recognition of the painting. 
So it has the elements that Mona Lisa has, but it's just not quite the same. But what next? So we have the organoids. Although they are not quite the same yet, and we can't replace the kidney functions now in the patients who need them yet, but they are very useful at the moment too. We can build a safer and better drugs, testing them on these artificial systems. And for those who, need, who will need the kidneys in the future, I would like to say that with the global efforts of scientific research and industry, the artificial kidneys is the help that it's on its way. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Arvidas. Um, I was going to ask for questions from the audience, but I have one. So I, I have always um, heard that I have to drink a glass of water for every beer. Does the kidney, like, tell me to do that? Or how does it work? <laughs> well, the kidney doesn't tell you to do that. <laughs> but you really should. <laughs> because when you drink a pint of beer, what happens is that you lose a lot of water, although you're drinking, you think that you drink quite a lot of liquid, right? But that liquid just goes right through, and what actually, your body is getting ripped off the um, rest of the water because of the alcohol, because of the way alcohol works. So, like, the alcohol makes the fluids go out because it messes up all the signaling system. Thanks. Uh, any questions from the audience? Sorry for being first. There, at least on. <laughs> Yes, yes. So they're repeating the question. Sorry. Beautiful question, beautiful question. We had this uh, six kidneys, like three pairs of kidneys, and, and the question was whether we know what's the other two pairs and w what are they doing. It does. Yes, it's known. Actually, it's, the, uh, it's a follow of the evolution. Like the other species use those kind of early, not so complicated kidneys in there, like uh, lizards or... or um, or some other lower animals, right? Now, in humans, why they are appearing, at certain point, they have uh, a bit of the help for the others, other type of kidneys to develop. And then they are also having some sort of function which later on is not useful for the, when we grow up. In the embryos, like, this, there's a first, first, part, first kidney appearing pair, the other, while the other is going away, the other is appearing. While the other is appearing, the other, like when the other pair is disappearing. So kind of sequential, <laughs> right? So it's not like, you know, off the go. So it's, it's, um, it looks like an evolutional, you know, jump there. But they have a small function. For example, some of the, uh, if I'm not killing the time, <laughs> uh, some of that function goes to the, Testis tubules. <laughs> they turn into tubules for testis. Any more questions? I, oh, yeah, there, there is one. So, your kidneys have uh, all the structures of usual human kidneys. Okay. The question is yes, yes, thank you. Very good question. Uh, the question was whether the kidneys, the artificial kidneys that I've showed, whether they have all the structures of, of the uh, kidney that they are in there. The answer is no. <laughs> but it has the, what we call main functions. So one of the kidneys' job is to filter. The other part is to drive that filtrate into the bladder. So what I, my focus is, is on filtering part. So my organoids are doing the filtering. Now this part which collects and drives it out into the u u well, like urine out to the bladder, that is lacking in my system. That was not the target of my research, at least what I was doing. But there are uh, made human uh, organoids which do also have broad variety. The biggest issue at the moment is to connect the vasculature so that the blood would efficiently come. That's the challenge at the moment. But everything else, the filtering, the, the connecting, seems to be not a problem. All right. Let's thank, Ar thank Arvidas one more time.